Yes, welcome along to episode 12 of Up in the Ante in association with Bet365 with David Jennings and Gavin Lynch counting down to the 2022 Cheltenham Festival. It was some race, folks. It was an absolute belter, Gavin. Ah, yeah, sure. Magic, magic. Super uh, weekend's racing, but that obviously by miles the highlight. Don't give too much away. We're going to be talking about it throughout the show. We're going to talk about Energamine and Shishkin. But before we start, Gavin, I have to issue an apology to our viewers. Right. Throughout last week's show, I kept calling Sporting John Sizing John. So I apologise. I don't know how it happened. Won't happen again. I promise. It's Sporting John, not Sizing John. How would you not know it? I should be only half listening to it. <laughs> well, I have to say, it's very sporting of you not to pull me up on it. But, uh, how was your week? Do you anything exciting? Yeah, sure. Nothing major. Uh, we went to uh, Belfast. Up to Belfast? Yeah, myself, herself and the two kids. And we went to see the movie in Navan. Oh. And uh, bumped into a chap, Declan O'Brien, afterwards. We were just chatting and uh, turns out he's, he likes the show and mad into racing, loves Cheltenham. And he actually worked in Jim Bulger's donkeys years ago. Wow. Uh, one fascinating story he told me was that uh, during Lent, which I think is 40 days, uh, that all the staff had to go to mass every day at 10 o'clock and uh, so that was holy god what was the movie like yeah it was good um not a lot happened uh not as good as afterlife afterlife unbelievable yeah just we watched the three series fantastic i actually know a fella who cried watching afterlife Shh, sh- get on with the show yes as always here on up in the ante we're going to kick off with our questions from the crowd and the first question this week comes in from Garrett Cummins and Garrett wants to know the answer to the question we all want to know the answer to and it is how can Energamine beat Shishkin at Cheltenham he wonders Gavin could Paul Townend go a bit quicker in the champion chase he looked in his comfort zone a mile from home Nico was flat out could he go a bit quicker Gavin and run the finish out of Shishkin I would think the opposite I think if he wants to beat him he'd want to go a little bit slower particularly in the first mile of the race Uh, the other day he had to keep his foot on the gas a little bit because he wa- didn't want first flow to come up sides him during the race. Mm. Uh, what's going to happen with your heart, Shaq and Persuade and Cheltenham, that's also something to keep in mind. As regards uh, the champion chase, Shishkin is two from two with Cheltenham. Obviously, Enogamine hasn't run there yet. Shishkin's going to be a little bit better going left-handed because even at Ascot, you saw, he just mm. jumped a tiny bit to uh, his left. Enogamine is the opposite. He jumps a tiny bit to his right. Mm. So that's another plus. As you pointed out in last week's show. Uh, so Enogamine, maybe not quite as good going left-handed. And also the uphill finish at Cheltenham is going to suit Shishkin, right? Yes. So, but on the, the counter argument to that is uh, the Clarence House the other day was 2 mile 167 yards. The champion chase is 188 yards less. So it's almost a furlong, 0.85 yeah. a furlong less, which well, will suit. Yeah, I've ran 188 yards a long way. It is, especially up a hill. Uh, the other thing I'll say to you is I went into a bit of research. The two furlong pole at Ascot is just before the second last, okay? In Cheltenham, the two furlong pole is before the bend. So they swing around the bend, mm. and from the second last to the line, I've worked out through horses times, it's roughly 1.65 furlongs to the line. Right? R- roughly. roughly. Just roughly. That's a rough estimate, yeah. Right, okay. Um, so I'm just saying to you that it's definitely shorter so from the second last to the line. So if Enercomine could go a little bit handier out in the country, save a bit of juice, like the best three jockeys I've ever seen in Cheltenham were probably... Uh, Ruby Walsh, Barry Garrity and Davy Russell and they mm. always kept something for the hill mm. and if Energamine is going to keep him away he's going to have to do that it's going to be a huge ask because everything went right for Energamine on Saturday but I just think you never know so it's not cut and dry then? I wouldn't have thought so uh, he's 8-15 to 15 with bet 365 non runner no bet but he's heading towards even money I think on the exchanges mm. and stuff so not everybody is convinced um, it, hopefully we get as good a spectacle again the next time but I just think there's, there's pros and cons for both of them the next day. Okay. So. And which camp would you be in at Chatham? I still think Shishkin will probably beat him, but I think it's going to be fascinating, particularly the fact that it's 188 yards shorter and it's shorter from two out to the line. Uh, I think Paul has to keep that in mind and try and save a little bit. Gavin, that's brilliant analysis. I love it. That's why you're on up in the ante. But I have three words for you. Three very, very important words. Shakon per swa. He is 12 to him with some firms. I think that's ridiculous. Yeah, and again, it's going to be interesting tactically if he's in the race because he his best performance was in Punchestown last year when he made all. So obviously, Willie won't want them taking each other on. So uh, Nicky would love that, but uh, Willie won't let that happen. We get a Nicky impression so. later on in the show? Uh, no. Okay, that was your question, Garrett. I hope you like the answer. Our second question this week comes in from Aaron Smith. And Aaron says, after the breathtaking Clarence House chase last weekend, what are myself and Gavin's three greatest races that we have witnessed? Do you want to go first or second, Gavin? First. Okay. So, so steal mine now. I have three, but there's two that are just worth a little mention. Here we well. go. Uh, Denman uh, beating Carlos Star in the 2008 Didn't Gold Cup. Didn't make your top three. No. Uh, and another race, 
that just has to get a mention is might bite winning the RSA in 2017. Because oh, yeah. that's like literally one of the maddest races you've ever seen. Mental. And to think that there was a nose between them at the line was some finish. It's like, you know, four o'clock in the middle of the night after a nightclub. It was just, you wouldn't know what you'd see at four <laughs> no. o'clock. And that was just mental. A mental race. Uh, so in number three, Moscow Flyers, uh, Tingle Creek, 2004, oh. beating Azerty up and well chief. I think that race gets mentioned more than any other race ever. Uh, so that's number three. That was close to making my top three. That just didn't make it, okay? okay. Number two. Uh, number two is the Champion Hurdle 2005. Ah, Hardy cool. Eustace, Archibald and Brave Inca, Paul Carberry in the middle and Archibald. Just a moment I'll never forget. I think I was actually there, so... Uh, uh, but what do you mean you think you were there? I think I you was. don't know if you were there or no, not? I can't remember. Well, then well, that means you weren't there. He wasn't there. If you can't remember that, you weren't there. I think I was. How was that not number one? I think one? I was down on the tarmac, so I couldn't really see the finish properly. How was that not number one? Uh, number one by a million miles. No contest for me is Don Run in 86. Okay. But you were too young, so. But uh, for Ireland, we desperately needed her to win the Gold Cup. We, we didn't get many winners in the 80s. It was just the moment of the year in any sport in Ireland. And it was an amazing finish. Like she was literally, what was she, third jump in the last maybe, and the commentaries, just fantastic. Now, race. just on that, right? Brilliant race, right? The commentaries. Ah, I like the commentaries. I that, know I've said this you before, don't like it. but it's the most overrated it's commentary not. in the history of commentary. Yeah, but you have to remember it's live. It's live, absolutely. But one line, the mayor is beginning to get up. Yeah. This iconic line, like it's not even... But even Desi Scal's anyway. commentary was brilliant as well. Uh, Desi, Desi's was better. Yeah, so... Desi's was better. Than to me, Peter definitely Sullivan's. the best finish I've ever seen. Okay, yeah, I was one, so I can't really You comment, don't remember but it? I, I, I've seen it, obviously. There, I don't no? remember it. No, I think I was on the changing table getting my nappy changed at that stage. Sorry, man. Go on, you're a three. Uh, my three are, number three is the 2012 Lexus. Okay. Uh, Tidal Bay, Ruby Walsh, getting up to be Fleming Star and first lieutenant. Yeah, just, great finish, yeah. Just, like, such such a change in complexion after the last, like, and yeah. it was just Ruby, the greatest jockey of all time, at his brilliant best, doing something that nobody else could do. And so. Tidal Bay was a funny character. And even Desi's commentary that day was just brilliant. It just captured it. He got the pitch perfect, I thought. So I thought that was a brilliant race. My number two, for sheer emotion in a grandstand, I don't think I can recall a moment like the 2009 Gold Cup with, with Dem and, and Cotto Starr. That was, that, have I the wrong year? 2008. 2008, yeah. 2008 Gold Cup with, with Dem and Cotto Starr. That is the one race, it, like, the grandstand was so nervous. It was like, these two horses, one against the other, and you could feel the tension in the grandstand. Yeah. You're kind of going, oh, he's gone, he's gone a few lengths clear here. Oh, was Ruby pushing? And even the commentary added to it as well. And I often think the greatest commentary I have ever heard, and I've said this many times yeah. on the show, Richard Hoyles that day, relentless, remorseless, has pounded Cotto Star into submission. And then just as they're passing the line, the answer is Demon. Demon won the Gold Cup. That, to me, is the greatest commentary I have ever heard. I thought okay. it just captured the moment perfectly. And number one, the race that you can't even remember being at, Gavin, no, no, was the 2005 it was champion hurdle. I actually, it was one of my first years in Cheltenham, and I went up to the owners and trainers section of the grandstand. It's just to the left-hand side. It's halfway up the run, and I think that's where Noel Mead and Desi Hughes, the, the late, great Desi what Hughes, watched the race as well. Time? What horse what? what? What horse did you own that was running that day? Oh, no. It's, <laughs> I actually went down. I had, a, I had a stupid accreditation pass from my local paper, Mead, and, and the guy who actually still stands there checking passes uh, took pity on me. The race was about to start. And I said, please let me up. And it was like the Mead Chronicle or the Mead Post or something was my accreditation. And sure, I had no right being there. And he let me up and I watched it. And I remember standing in the grandstand. I was a big Archibald fan. I backed Archibald. But it, it felt, it didn't feel real at all. Mm. It felt like there was another circuit to go or something was wrong. It just didn't feel real as Paul passed us. And that to me, it just summed up everything about jump racing. Yeah. 2005. Champion hurdle. Some great finishes. Your down run? Yeah, down run, yeah. Great question, wasn't it? Yep. Very great good. question, Aaron. And our final question this week comes in from Paula Campbell. And Paula wants to know, Gavin, she loves sticking a couple of euro each way on big outsiders okay. at the Chetland Festival. So she wants each of us to provide her with one horse at 33 to 1 or bigger for a race at the Chetland Festival. This took a few minutes, but anyway, I eventually found one. Uh, one. Ben Dundee, a 33 to 1 for the Ultima. That's a good shout. Uh, was second in the Paddy Power Handicap Chase at Christmas, was only beaten a half a length, has gone from 142 to 146. Obviously, that's an Irish rating. It'll still get another couple of pounds, so it can't go in the Kim Euro, which is not 145. Mm. So I think it'll go for the Ultima. Can't go for the National Chase because it won a chase many years ago. It is a 10 year old, but an 11 year old won it last year. Ireland haven't won it uh, since 2006 with Dundara. But a 33 to 1, I think it'll go for that race. And if it runs as well as it did at Christmas, it must have a chance. And has experience at Cheltenham as well. Didn't yeah. it finish fifth in the Paddy Power Plate a few years ago? Could have, Dave. I don't remember exactly, but yeah. I think it was. Yeah, yeah. That's a good shout. Ben Dundee for the ultimate for Gavin. And mine is 40 to 1. 
And it's actually running this weekend. I think simply the bets are 40 to 1 for the Ryanair is too big of a price. Uh, I thought he ran really well with a big weight and a handicap last time at Cheltenham. He's likely to run in the Cotswold Chase this weekend against a high senior in Chantry House, maybe. Mm-hmm. I just think 40 to 1 for a horse like that who's done it at Cheltenham. He's obviously not going to beat Alaho, but I thought 40 to 1 was too big of a price, but okay. simply the bets in the Ryanair. So there you go, Paula. A 40 to 1 shot and a 33 to 1 shot. That'd be nice, though. Well, it would. You could retire on that, Paula. So now, folks, it's time for the week that was. Yes, this is Gavin Lynch's chance to tell you all about the horses that have impressed him over the last seven days. Take it away, Mr. Lynch. Uh, plenty to talk about. So a couple that didn't get, get onto the list and they're probably a bit lucky. Well, not they to, obviously so. did because you're mentioning them now. Uh, we'll see. Uh, we're going to start in Newbury on Wednesday, walking on air. Uh, five-year-old trained by Nicky. Uh, only his second start. See the way I didn't say career start, Dave. Uh, he won by 13 lengths. He was getting seven pounds from the second horse, but he absolutely bolted up. Jumped well. Uh, jumped very, very well. Nicky said afterwards that he's talking about the Ballymore, obviously because he has mm. the two fabs, or Constitution Hill and John Bond for the Supreme. Um, he was five seconds slower than the handicap hurdle, but I went and analysed the two races. Uh, the handicap hurdle was won by Fine Casting, who's only got a rating of 114. So they went really slow early on on uh, walking, in, walking on air's on air. race. Um, but from the third last of the line, he was actually 24 lengths quicker than the handicap hurdle, so don't let that put you off. Uh, he's a very, very good horse. He's 10 to 1 for the Ballymore. On to uh, Linkfield on Friday. Some great racing in Linkfield Friday and Sunday. Mm. Uh, Metier won the handicap hurdle. He adores heavy ground. <clears throat> the horse in second ran very well. Gowell Road was only beaten a length and a quarter. Um, Metier is 14 to 1 for the county hurdle in the Carl Cup. I'd be against him in Cheltenham simply because of the ground. Mm. Uh, he won the Tallworth on heavy. And, and a on, shocker in the Supreme. Yeah, so on heavy ground, he's a decent animal. Okay. On to Ascot on Saturday, plenty to talk about here. Uh, Dr. Parnassus is the first one. A nice four year old. He's 25 to 1 for the Triumph Hurdle. He was not from 10 on the flat, had a rating of 75. First run over hurdles. He was very green. He ran around a bit, particularly mm. at the last. A fine big horse, jumped quite well. Uh, he's a decent animal uh, for the skeletons. I thought he was, he was impressive. Uh, unexpected party, a gorgeous grey horse, absolutely bolted up. Um, Jumped very well, travelled strongly, got nice gaps up the inside. It's only his sixth run, and he's certainly improving. Second horse ran well there, Phil Sudares. Yeah, for Nicky, yeah. Yeah, ran Used to be with Joseph, race. wasn't he? Used to be with Joseph, yeah. He could have a chance in the Carl Cup. Okay. Uh, so, unexpected part, he won this off 130, and I found out this morning the other ratings came out that he's got £12 pounds for that. Yeah, he's up to 142, mm-hmm. so. Uh, he's uh, 14 to 1, joint favourite with Metier for the Carl Cup. Uh, Molly Ollie's wishes. What a careful. mad race. Yeah, mad race. Um, so Tom Bellamy won't mind it again. Yeah, Western Victory went way, way too fast, like way too hard. And then uh, Harry's getting there a bit too soon at the bend because mm-hmm. I suppose it's hard for a jockey when you've got a clear leader. Do you go after him or do you wait? So Yeah, and it's funny because I was mad on my sister Sarah and a few of my mates backed it. And the first thing after the race I said, Paul Townham, what are you doing on my sister Sarah? I actually thought, I know this is impossible. It was almost the greatest ride of the season. On, it could have been if he got back I don't up, yeah. think I don't think she was travelling at any stage no, of the race. she wasn't, no. And he, he kind of allowed her to fill her lungs. I don't think it was a bad ride at all. You would have liked to have seen him sitting a little bit closer, but I don't know if he was able to. Yeah, the winner was much the best horse in the day, but oh, just yeah. had to go for its race too soon. Yeah. Uh, 20 to 1 for the Mayor's Hurdle. Uh, next one to talk about is Phoenix Way, who jumped really, really well. It won off 140. This morning we found out that it's gone up £6 to 146, so therefore... It can't go for the Kim Ewer, for example. Not that it would have, probably, but just it can't. Now Tipped up on last week's show. Very good. Thanks. Uh, Kevin Brogan gave it one of the rides of the day. Maybe really? not as good as Sean Flanagan and Navin, but it was a brilliant ride. Yeah, yeah. And even to wait and wait and wait, say a two out, etc., mm. was really, really good. It beat Fanny and Destreval by a length and a half, and the two of them were 16 lengths clear of the rest. Fanny and Destreval has gone up by three pounds to 162, so just to keep that in mind. Excellent. Uh, Next one is Shishkin and Enigamin. So I just want to talk a couple of things here. Firstly, um, you know, there's brilliant friendly rivalry between England and Ireland, and this was England's day on Saturday, so fair play to them. Um, Nicky afterwards, William Mullins afterwards, the two of them spoke brilliantly, and even going by the line when Paul put the hand out to Nico yeah. to say well done. Do, do you I just th- love that in racing. Do you think England needed this? I'd say they probably did. Like if Enigamin went and won by a couple of lengths, they'd be saying, geez, our best horse after Yeah, that was my point. I did a column on this, right? You probably didn't read it. Do you read it? Uh, sometimes I do. Okay. But I, didn't read this I did one. a column on this. I have never got such abuse in all my life for the column. My point was that if Enigamin beat Shishkin fair and square, that the English banker, the one horse that they're putting their hat on, is not as good as Enigamin. And I just thought for Cheltenham, it needed Shishkin to win in the day. Yeah, I thought it's good for racing. And... Uh, Fair play, the best horse won of the day. So, yeah. And as I said to you, I thought that uh, Willie, Nicky, Paul and Nico 
all just brilliant oh, fellas. Brilliant. It was just yeah. a fabulous occasion. Yeah. One thing is, uh, I went and compared it with the, the handicap chase that we just mentioned, the Fanny and Destreval uh, race, and I analysed all the sectionals between each fence. Good man. And um, overall, there was six lengths quicker. This is from the second last fence plus a circuit. Okay. And uh, Shishkin's race was six lengths quicker. But throughout the race, there was very, very little between them, between each fence. There was only a second here and a second there. So I don't think Paul actually did go yeah. a mental gallop. He went a nice, yeah. a nice gallop. So, um, But should he have went quicker then? I don't think so, no. Mm. Because I think you have to keep something to the end. But yeah, yeah. It'll be interesting to see the tactics come March. Oh, yeah. And we can't wait. So it's going to be great. The one thing I'd say, I think personally, that Enigamine is good value each way at three to one. For example, if you did happen to have 100 quid each way, You'd either win 360 if you won, and if you're second or third, you only lose 40 quid. So, just one way of thinking about it. Yeah, you've no problem backing each way at 3 to 1. 3 to 1, 7 to 2, 4 to 1, no. Particularly, I don't think they might even end up with 8 runners on the day. And then come March, you're going, geez, I, can't, I can only back him quarter of the odds, 1 2 or whatever. So, yeah. you get the three place at the minute. So. Mm. Interesting. Meanwhile, at Hey Doc. <laughs> <laughs> uh, is that Gogglebox? That's your man from Gogglebox. Craig yeah. Cash. Is that his name? That was very good. Give us it I, again. No, I like Gogglebox. Yeah, it's very good. Gogglebox. Uh, like uh, John Bond beat uh, Richmond Lake by three lengths. You have to remember that John Bond was carrying 11 11. <sighs> Richmond Lake was carrying 11 6. Um, Third horse was Might I. So there's obviously a link between Might I and Constitution Hill. Constitution Hill beat him up a stick. Uh, getting, in weight. getting weight. Getting uh, weight. This time, uh, John Bond was giving weight. So. But what, what would you give it out of 10 performance wise? I was in between like a 6 and a 7. I I wasn't blown away in it. I'd give it more than a, at least a 7 anyway. Would you? Um, you have to remember this was the first time John Bond was in a proper race where yeah. they actually went to proper gallop all the way around. Yeah. Um, he was very, very lucky to have missed, uh, is it Danny Boy? Donny Boy? At Donny the third, Boy. Donny yeah, Boy at the third last. Yeah. He crossed him. And I don't know how John And Bond it was a side him. on camera angle. I'd say head on, it was even more so. Yeah, so yeah. Very, very lucky to miss him. Look, at, he didn't have the wow factor. He didn't knock your socks off with the performance. As Nicky said afterwards, he did very well to quicken twice. He quickened to get there and then he quickened after the last. I'd say he learned a huge amount. He learned more on Saturday than he did the previous two runs, that's for sure. Any chance of a Nicky impression? No. Uh, Tommy's Oscar, uh, there's one thing to tell you, is that uh, Tommy's Oscar's time uh, was five seconds quicker than John Bond. Yeah, they went very quick in that. They did. Yeah. Uh, he's now 25 to 1 for the champion hurdle, but just keep it in perspective. The horse that was second global citizen is a 10 year old, mm. and his current rating is 134. Mm. So. Look, he is everything you want about John Bond. Oh, you'd love to own him. But he is just, you, you, you fall in love with him, and he's improving, but he can't win a champion hurdle. I don't think so. No. But. Uh, you know, he's now after winning, what is it, uh, four wins in a row. So. Yeah, go Fair play, horse, lovely yeah. horse, yeah. Uh, Royal Pagai uh, won off 163, which is a fair performance. He's now got three pounds for that. I think he's up to 166. Mm. Um, I would just think, look at, for me, he can't win a Gold Cup. But uh, So Mir will get a heavy ground Gold Cup. Yeah, if he gets heavy, he'd have a chance. But the one thing I'd have against him more so even than that is his jump, and I just don't think is slick enough. Mm. He's getting, it away with, getting away with it in handicaps, but... At that top level, you yeah. need to be ping, 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 ping yeah. yeah. He's 20 to 1 for the Gold Cup, but I, I wouldn't really be into him now, to be honest. Great to see Rich Richie back on a race course. Yeah, honest to God, yeah, with yeah. the long hair and the whole lot, yeah. Yeah, well. yeah. Um, on to Navin on Saturday, Ash Tree Meadow uh, won the maiden hurdle. Had This uh, was his third run. His previous two runs over hurdles was third to Gringo Dabrell and also third to Sir Gerhard over two miles. This was two and a half. First time tongue tie, first time headgear. Won very, very well in the end. Uh, there was four two and a half mile races over hurdles ran in Avon on Saturday, and his was the quickest by 10 lengths. So mm. he's decent. Um, Kevin Ryan asked Gordon afterwards, could we see him in a handicap at Cheltenham? And he kind of nodded that that was going to happen. So yeah. he's 16 to 1 for the Martin Pipe. Now, Gordon loves to win the Martin Pipe because he used to work with, with Martin many years ago. Uh, but at this stage, I'd say Gordon's going to have seven or eight in the race the way it's going. He's so. going to have the entire field. He could, yeah. Uh, also to mention, Joyu Mashon in the bumper, a very messy race, they didn't go quick, they all wanted to come wide to the better ground, they were banging into each other, it was mm. like bumping cars there, a furlong and a half out, did very very well to win, won easy in the end uh, for Barry O'Neill, had been beaten uh, six lengths by Facile Vega at Christmas, so that was a big compliment. I thought that was a big performance, mm. you know, the gap closed on him two out, a lesser horse wouldn't have quick in the game and he shot through the gap I think he he, he's entitled to run Chetlam and you know he's a big price I uh, think he'll run well yeah the second horse Don Chalon stayed on very well mm. too so he's a nice horse but uh, Joyu Machan is 20 to 1 I think for, mm. for Cheltenham and as a result of that now they're joint favourites at the top end of the market mm. uh, it's 3 to 1 American Mike and 3 to 1 Facile mm. Vega so fascinating 
It sure is. Uh, How are we getting on? Good. Uh, Thurlis on Sunday. Uh, hey, our well, uh, Thurlis. <laughs> Thurlis on Sunday. Uh, Jerry Colombe uh, beat Idas by a length and a quarter over two miles seven. He's now five and five. He's won a point to point. He's won two bumpers. He's won the two hurdle races. He won a down royal. He's won here at Thurlis. Thurlis, as Gordon said, was not his track. Yeah. Like, Thurlis is a speed track. You have to travel really well. Yeah. He was on and off the bridle a few times. Away from his hurdles, he would have to be pushed along new by Jack. New course going to suit him. The new course, like, the Albert Bartlett, it's cruel that it's on the new course for novices to think. Like, it probably should be on the old course because it'd be a bit easier. But yeah. the, the new course is such a, <clears throat> a galloping track, particularly from a mile out, uh, with that uphill finish for three furlongs. So, uh, he's 10 to 1 for the Albert Bartlett. He'll stay all day. He wasn't overly visually impressive, but no. he's the type of horse that will suit the yeah, race. Yeah, actually, straight after the race, I said, no, 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 he didn't impress me. And the more I think about it, mm. and the more horses are taken out of their comfort zone in that Albert Bartlett, like, he's going to be the one that's going to keep at it. He will stay going all day. Yeah, yeah, so definitely has a chance. He has an each way chance for sure. Uh, on to Alaho, who... Alaho, just, he's, he's really bulletproof. He is. Uh, now, the race was over after the first fence. It was, like, It was yeah. over. Like, that yeah. was as bad a mistake as you can make and survive for Fakir de Daris. Yeah, uh, Mark nearly went out the side door. Uh, Fakir de Daris was beaten 12 lengths in the end, but you still wanted to see Aloha jump well, yeah. travel well, and he did all that. Yeah. Because he had a very hard race in the, is it the John Durkin John Memorial? Durkin, yeah. Um, you still want to see him coming back fresh and doing, putting in a good performance, which he did. Like, he's rated 174. Now, I know Shishkin this morning has gone up to 177, mm. but I think Shishkin is literally the only horse that could beat him in a Ryanair. Uh, because he, he sets a very, very high standard. Uh, he's 5-4, to four, non run on a bet with bet 365, and to me, that's yeah. fair enough. And, and I'd actually, uh, like, he's going to be very hard to beat, but I see Fakir Dadar is pushed out to 14-1, to one. too big of a price. He'll okay. be placed. Okay. Um, on to the Hunter's Chase, the first decent Hunter's Chase mm. that I've seen all season. Um, Bill Away was Bill Away. He, he never runs that well first time of the season. So he was well beaten by 12 lengths in the end, but his jumping was poor. I counted five mistakes. Yeah. And to me, you know, he's been second in the last couple of Hunters Chase at Cheltenham, but his jumping is just not slick enough. So, I uh, he jumped okay in the in the race at Cheltenham last year, he but did. he's probably not just as good as he was either. No, maybe Very not. Very hard team winning this year. Uh, wing leader is 8-1 for the Hunters Chase. Bill away, I think, is still 6-1 favourite. Wing leader is only an eight-year-old. Massive chance. Massive chance, yeah. That's five wins in a row for him. Yeah. So, And David Christie said he, he thinks the horse would suit entry, but he'll definitely get a Cheltenham yeah. entry as well, so... Uh, two more to go. Warwick on Sunday. Uh, Saint Segal uh, is now <clears throat> well. It was joint favourite for a day or two after um, Sunday. Um, it's had three runs. It won a banger. Was second to Portocello in the Grade One at Chepstow at Christmas, and then it it won this race of one to seven. And considering it was the week that Meatloaf passed away, two out of three ain't bad. But he's fourteen to one for the for the for the Boodles, and he'd have to have a chance. He's got an official rating of one twenty six. Uh, and since then, Gaelic Warrior, who's had three runs uh, for a French trainer, has joined William Mullins. He's now 10 and 12 to 1 uh, favourite for the, for the Boodles. And the last horse to mention... For the Boodles. Oh, oh yeah. Jupiter, sorry <laughs> for the Jupiter. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, go on. You like <laughs> that one, didn't you? I did, yeah. Uh, Linkfield on Sunday, Warlord, uh, beat Favoir by three and a quarter lengths. He has an official rating of 146, but he did pay a compliment to Edward Stone, who'd beaten him by 16 mm. lengths in the Henry VIII back in December at Sandown. Uh, Warlord jumped pretty well. He's 40 to 1 for the Arkell. Two horses that didn't get a mention really is Bally Griffin Cottage and Banbridge. They were a bit unlucky not to get a mention, but uh, that's the week that was. That was the week that was. So, up in the anti viewers, listen up. You have got to join the Racing Post Ultimate Members Club because, Gavin, it's only 15 quid for three months. 15 quid. What better value will you get anywhere in the the world. 15 quid, Racing Post members, ultimate subscription, and you get the digital newspaper the night before, Gavin, so you do. You get top tipping from our very own Tom Siegel and Paul Keeley and our host of other top class tipsters, and you get to see race replays. You get to do anything you want, Gavin. Everything you need about racing is in the Racing Post members club ultimate section. Yeah, and if you get that 15 quid for three months, that'll take you right through to Cheltenham Entry, so why not? Is it money well spent? Absolutely. Gavin Lynch has spoken. Join the Racing Post Members Club. So each week here on Up in the Ante, we preview one of the greater races at the 2022 Chatham Festival. And this week, it's a turn of a fascinating stairs hurdle. At the moment with Bet365, your 2-1 to favourite is Classical Dream, and you're going to see him in action in the John Mulhern Galmai hurdle at Gorham Park on Thursday. 7-2 to champ, you're going to see him in action in the Cleave hurdle as well. So it's going to be interesting to see what you think yeah. here, Gavin. People might want to bet before the weekend. And 5-1, to one, each of two, we have got 
Time Hill, who's 5 to 1, who must have massive chance, and last year's winner, Flooring Portance, 12 to 1 bar, which includes sizing John, Sporting John, Sporting John. <laughs> okay, so Gavin, classical dream. We're going to see him Thursday. What are you expecting Thursday, and is he the horse to beat? I think he'll win on Thursday. I think he'll be odds on. I think he'll be Royal Kahala. Um, whether his price will change a lot from that, probably not. He's already only 2 to 1, so it's not like he's going to be even money after winning that race. Okay. Um, Champ? Well, just to finish on, on uh, Classical Dream, <clears throat> is that when it won at Christmas, obviously we all know the start, that it got six or eight lengths at the start, hung on to win by, say, a couple of lengths from Flooring Porter. But Willie Mullen said afterwards that he expressed a lot of uh, improvement to come from Classical mm. Dreams, just to bear that in mind. And he said he hadn't been working great. Yeah, so... So he wasn't burning up the gallop. So it'll be interesting to see if we do see an improved mm. Classical Dream. And it wasn't a bad performance. No, and then he was electric last year in Punchestown. He's already won the Supreme... I suppose he's a fragile type of horse that doesn't run very often. So if he stays in one piece, he has to be a favourite, yeah. Champ. Yeah, I think Champ has a massive chance in the stairs. What, what has happened to you? <laughs> you have changed. No. Uh, Why? I just think hurdles are his bag. Uh, he was very, very good the last day. He loomed up on the outside before, before the turned in. I think he'll adore the fact that Flooring Porter is going to make it a good gallop. So I could see him travelling really strongly in the stairs hurdle. We know that he stays. Uh, he jumped quite well the last day, even though he had been over fences last year. So... Yeah, Champ has to have a big chance. So he's running obviously on Saturday in the Cleve Hurdle at Cheltenham. Would you advise punters if, to take the 7-2 to now or wait? Ah, he'll, he'll win as well. Like himself and Classical Dream will both win this week. Okay, so the boat could be shorter. Yeah, there's probably, as I said, uh, because you can't dismiss Flooring Porter and Time Hill, they're not going to shrink down too okay. much. But um, Now last week we spoke before the show and we were having a little chat about what we fancy in various races and you did mention to me the flooring porter was very close to being one of your selections. Yeah, just the each way of value. Like he's five to one. Um, I think he's a very underrated horse. Now he, he's as quirky. I was going to say as, as you as, as me, uh, but I'm he's as straightforward he, as they come. <laughs> Pop me out in front. <laughs> I'll stay going. Like he's he's as mad as a brush flooring porter, <clears throat> but um, he's got a lot of talent. Yeah. I think his most important furlong would be the first one yeah. that Danny tries to get out in front uh, and doesn't have to chat to the starter after fifty yards. Um, your horse, Time Hill. Yeah, well, like, by now, the same things, things, you're rating him the fourth out of these four. Look at it. It's, it's a really good race, first of all. Yeah, it um, actually has turned into a good race. Yeah, yeah, so he was good at Aintree. I just didn't like the fact that he went to Otai beating 40 lengths, but he actually ran very well in Ascot, which yeah. is a hard thing to do after going away and running on bad ground and stuff. Um, Can I put it to you yeah. that the, obviously I've tipped Time Hill um, as one of my selections, and I'm still pretty confident because I think the way... The race is going to be ran. It's going to suit him so much. Like you've seen him in the long walk. He was on it. He was off it. He was on it. He was off it. It was a stop-start gallop. Keith took it up at one stage um, on 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 um, Matthew Smith's horse, yes. Ronald Pump, and it was just stop-start. And that doesn't suit Time Hill. Time Hill in ten gallop, and he's a proper stayer who can travel into the race. The hill is going to suit him. That Albert Bartlett form is obviously top class as well. And mm. um, he was probably unlucky not to win that. You know he likes Cheltenham. I just think Time Hill, it's impossible to kick him out of the frame. Yeah. Um, well, have then I, he'll have, have to I be... convinced you? No. Um, but it's a, it's a top class race. Sporting John, your pal, will probably go for the pretense, you think, because JP is champion here. Yeah. It's 16 to 1 bar. You're going to say to me, if you got one at a big price, I don't. I look through it and I just don't. Yeah. So, I think the top four in the market are very, very solid. Have you got one at a big price? No. no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so at the moment, here and now, if up in the ante viewers want to have a bet on the Sayers Hurdle, who would you pick? maybe Florian Porter each way but this week as he said with the Classical Dream and Champ the two of them are probably going to win so it'll change next week so it's kind of kind of Florian Porter for Gavin Lynch and I'm still in the Time Hill camp so up in the anti viewers what you want to know now is what's happening this week and as is the case with these kind of weeks between now and the middle of February there's loads Gavin <laughs> loads yeah. loads happening this week yeah. and we're kicking off at Gorham Park on Thursday with, as we said already, the John Mulhern Galmai hurdle. No album photo, but we do have Classical Dream. We do have Royal Kahala. What are you expecting? Uh, Classical Dream will win here, I'd say. Okay. Uh, it's got an official rate of 166. She's off 140. She gets £11, mm -hmm. so it brings it up to 151. She still has £15 to make up on them. I don't think she will. She's a lovely mare now. But... Yeah, do you know what? You're probably right, but I wouldn't be surprised if we're standing here next week and going... God, Royal Cahala was very good, wasn't mm. she? I'm not saying she'd win at Cheltenham because I think she does need really soft ground. And I know it's drying out at Gorham Park, but it's still soft. It's still going to be hard work. I could see Royal Cahala absolutely tanking into contention. And if there's any Betfair in running players watching, Royal Cahala is the play here because I think she'll trade odds on in running. Whether she'll go by Classical Dream, yeah. I don't know. 
But this could be her big day. I think if she's to win another race or a big race this season, I think this is it rather than the mayor's hurdle. Okay. I think she's got a massive chance. Massive yeah, no, chance. She'd love the, the soft ground. Yeah. Uh, and just to say, I'd say there's going to be a massive crowd oh. in, uh, in going. Are you going? Back. I was going to go. I'm going. I was going to go, except I have to bring Amory's car to get her thing fixed. And that's all. There'll be 3.5 million people there. I'd say the whole of Ireland are going to go. At least 2 million. Live yeah. on RT as well, so and uh, RTV. So it's going to be a great occasion. Uh, best of luck to Eddie Scally and all the team at Goran Park and the big one it is the Goffs Tiestas Chase I love this race I love it yeah it's a bookie's benefit it's a very hard yeah, race to, to pick the winner of uh, I'll give you a 16 to 1 shot smoking gun won the Porters Town has only had 3 runs for the Cullenter team Dennis O'Regan rides it again it's off a low weight uh, 10 stone 2 or 4 down the bottom at 16 to 1 smoking gun has a chance ok that's interesting and I also like a Gordon Elliott horse and he has the favourite and none of us are tipping Brayside I actually like debt duty here Okay. I know it's debt duty. Yes, the same debt duty yeah. that was favoured for the Albert Bartlett, who had the world at his feet. But he's down to a mark of one three nine now. He's gone up just. I think he's gone up maybe. I don't know if he went up for finishing fifth in the Paddy Power, but he's off one three nine now. Jordan Gainford claims three pound to run the way he did on that ground in the Paddy Power. I thought that was a huge run. I think this ground will suit him. I actually think the track at Gorn will really suit him as well. And. Uh, I just think at a huge price. I think Debt Duty could go really well. I could see Foxy Jacks running well as well, a big price. I, I would say that uh, I don't think this will be as scary as 10 Entry National. I think the Entry National will be as Entry yes. National. Yes, as scary as 10. Keep an eye out for as <laughs> scary 10. Yes. So, uh, as I said, Debt Duty for me and Smoking Gun. Two Gordon Elliott horses were tipping for the Goffs. So, yes, this chase. And it's Trials Day at Cheltenham on Saturday. And the Cleave Hurdle, Gavin, it's all yes. about Champ. Ah, uh, yeah, Champ will win. Uh, Paisley Park's eleven to four. Mike Fabulous is four to one. He'll probably improve for the last day. Yeah. But I think four to seven champ is good value. Yeah. I don't really back odds on, but for for money buyers, that's good price. Yeah. I, I, is it though? It's champ. Like, can you uh, rely on champ? Yeah, I think he'll win. Yeah. Right. Okay. I think Mike Fabulous is running a big race again. A bit like Royal Kahala and Classical Dream. I'm not sure that Mike Fabulous will be champ, but I think I love to see the way he came up the hill last time. Mike yeah, I just don't know if he stays three mile. Mike Fabulous. Okay. We'll see. We'll see. And uh, also we've got the Cotswold Chase. I have a strong opinion on this, Gavin. Let you go first. What you do you fancy first. in the Cotswold Chase? Um, I think we'll find out if Chantry House obviously is going to recover from the King George. Uh, won at Cheltenham last year. I think a high senior will run a big, big race. But I still think Chantry House might just he be He won't out. just run a big, big race. He'll win it. Okay. He'll win it. I think either him, and I think it will be a high senior, or simply the bets will win this. I think Chantry House is the lay of the weekend. Really? I really do, yeah. I think he's... I think he's. I know he's won. A, he's won grade ones. He's won two grade ones. I think he's overrated. Okay. I think circumstances have favoured him. I think Envy Allen fallen, and obviously the race at Aintree, the big faller as well. Yes. And you know he beat the big breakaway at Sandown. He was shocking in the King George. Maybe it was the ground. I don't know. But to me, he is not a top of the pops grade one performer. Okay. To use your phrase. Uh, yeah, and uh, he's he's around even money so. He was, he, odds on, yeah, he was odds on yesterday. I couldn't believe it. Uh, I, I think Chantry House is definitely worth taking on. Uh, I'd like to see a high senior. I think going right hand of the last, he didn't really suit him. His jumping was poor, to be honest, yeah. uh, in the Cato Star. So if he comes back to the, the Newbury farm, he'd have to run a big race. Okay, okay. So it'll very, be very interesting. But I think Chantry House is the lay of the weekend. And also, just to mention, Ferrius, we've got the Salarina Mayor's Novice mm. Hurdle on Saturday. And at Nace and Sun, we've the Limestone Lad, a grade three, two mile hurdle. And we have the Nace Racecourse Business Club, a uh, novice's chase over three miles. I think that used to be the Woodlands. Yes. So you might see one or two horses trying to qualify maybe for the national, national chase. chase and stuff like that. So there's three good races in Ireland at the weekend. There you go. There's loads happening. That's what's happening this week. Now it's time for Up in the Stakes. Yes, where Bet365 have kindly given myself and Gavin Lynch 50 quid to try and raise some much needed funds for Cancer Trials Ireland. So I'm going to go first this week, Gavin, okay. because my selection is running at Gorham Park on Thursday. It's in the 3.35. It is the Beginner's Chase, which has thrown up Cheltenham Festival winners in the past. And you're going to think, it's Curse of Blime. It's not. It's a horse running against Curse of Blime. It is You Raised Me Up for Martin Brazel and Dara O'Keefe. Now, You Raised Me Up finished fourth to Fernie Hollow in the same race that Curse of Blime finished second, the Beginner's Chase at Punchestown. But I think there's loads of improvement to come from You Raised Me Up. I think Curse of Blime, we have seen time and time again. His season seems to start really well. Mm -hmm. And then it seems to just start backpedalling. And I suppose Henry's aren't still buzzing yeah, yet. Yeah, they're still not buzzing. He's an absolutely lovely horse, Curse Sublime. And, you know, on his day, he's extremely, extremely good. He almost won the, the, the grade one in November a few years ago. But I just think with You Raise Me Up, he was sent off favour for the Kenji Hurdle last year. 
They do think a lot of him. I know he was only 136 rated hurdler. I loved what I saw for three quarters of that race at Punchestown. I think he's the one that's going to be progressing. I think Curse of Blind might potentially go the other way this season. And you raise me up. Will be a decent price. He'll probably be, you know, 7 to 2, 4 to 1, I'd imagine. So I'm going to have my 50 quid on the nose on you raise me up in the 335 at Gorham Park on Thursday. I'll be disappointed if he's beaten Gavin. Davy, 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 Davy. Uh, Balco Coastal, Saturday, trained by Nicky. It's in the 340. It's going stepping up to two and a half miles. Nicky knows what it takes to beat Hillcrest because I am Maximus. <clears throat> ran close to that last day. I think this is a better horse. He's two from two over hurdles. So Balco Coastal, I think he's around nine to four. That'll do for me. Okay, in the finale at Cheltenham on Saturday, Balco Coastal for Gavin Lynch. And you raise me up in the 335 at Coram Park on Thursday. Those are your latest two selections for up in the stakes. So you've got here, you've got to the main part of the show. They probably skipped the first bit. <laughs> they probably skipped the first bit, but if you've watched it all so far, you've managed to plod away through the show and get to this point because it is time for our latest picks for the 2022 Cheltenham Festival. Yeah, David, I don't have one for you. You don't have any? Well, I have two for you. I don't oh, have one. I have oh, two. Okay. But okay. Now, in fairness, you did that wrong because you should have said, <laughs> I don't have one for you. I don't you have said, one. I don't have any. But anyway, okay. so you have two for me this week. Two, yeah. Oh, right, okay. Where do you want to start? I'm going to start with the National Hunt Chase. Okay. Uh, now, just to say, I have backed Run Wild Fred in a few little multiples here and there over the last month or two, but uh, I'm going to pick another horse in the race. Go for it. Uh, at 10 to 1, I'm going to go for On Baton, uh, owned by Chivley Park, trained by William Mullins. Ran a couple of bumpers, was third in a maiden hurdle, then won a uh, maiden hurdle down in Tremor. Nothing to get excited about there. Certainly not for Cheltenham. He's only had the one run uh, this season, which was over fences, New Year's Eve in Punchestown. Danny Mullins rode it. It beat Everett Lowe by 21 lengths. Uh, to me, his jumping was superb. The distance of that race was 2 miles 7 and 40 yards, which we'll come back to in a minute. Uh, but it, to me, he just looks like a chaser. You have to remember the horse that was second is currently rated 132 and has some decent runs in the book. So uh, on Baton achieved a racing post rating from that race of 147, which is very, very decent. Mm -hmm. um, when I said about the distance of 2 miles 7 and 40 yards, you have to, Yeah, there's lots of qualifications. You have to have be over 120. Mm -hmm. You have to have had one run that season, two over fences. And you have to be in the first four in a race over 2 miles 7 and a half. So he has to go again anyway. But uh, I think he'll probably go to the 10-up novice chase. I think it's on the 23rd of February or something. At Navin, at Navin, Hurdle yeah. Day Navin, yeah. Yeah, and uh, so he's to finish in the first four that day to qualify. But even Statler hasn't qualified. Capitano mm -hmm. hasn't qualified. There's mm -hmm. loads of them that haven't. So I accept the point that Run Wild Fred, who's had 10 chase starts, has way more experience than, than this fellow. And he's rated 158. He is. Uh, but he's 7-2. to I don't want to tip up a horse 7-2. to So I've backed the two of them. <laughs> You've done it before. No, not this is no. Um... I've backed uh, Run Wild Fred a while ago, but I think on Baton at 10 to 1 as a super each way chance. I'd be just a little bit hesitant with Statler whether he's definitely going to stay at 3 mm -hmm. mile 6. I tipped him up in last year's Bartlett. He travelled well to the bend, but if you go watch him in the last three furlongs, he didn't power up the hill, so mm -hmm. I'd be a bit worried about him. Capitano might can go for this race. Vanilli is jumping the last day, he was a bit hesitant. Mm -hmm. So I just think on Baton, he's a real chaser. I think he'd definitely stay the trip. And I think a 10 to 1 is good value. 10 to 1 on Baton in the National Hunt Chase is Gavin Lynch's first pick this week. But you're getting two for the price of one. You have another one. Yeah, uh, going for a horse in the uh, Coral Cup. Uh, trained by Nigel Twist and Davis. Whoa! Yeah, 20, I wasn't expecting this. Uh, 25 to 1 Gowl Road. Uh, ran last Friday behind Metia. So uh, it's had four runs this season. Ran in the Silver Trophy. Then it ran in a handicap hurdle. First time ever beyond two and a half mile. It was two mile five. It was on the old course, which is the course and distance for the Carl Cup. Okay, so it it was up at the running as usual. Uh, took it up at the bend, powered away, won easy. The horse that was second that day was unexpected party. So Gowl Road beat it by two and a half lengths, beat it easy. Now that horse obviously has improved since. Um, it actually got beaten Weatherby when Harry had danced in the pants and got there too soon, three out. But he Sorry, gave it. Harry. He gave it a super ride the other day in, in Ascot. Oh yeah, he covered yourself there. Yeah, yeah he uh, held it up late. Got lovely splits up the inside. So Unexpected Party is joint favourite currently for the Carl Cup. Unexpected Party has now gone up to 142, right? So Gow Road that day in Cheltenham gave it £14. In the Carl Cup, if they meet, uh, he only has to give it £3. So even though he beat it, he's £11 better off with the favourite. But still Gow Road is 25 to 1. So to me, uh, I think that price is too big. Uh, it ran, uh, after it beat that, it ran second to... Uh, one more for the road in a slowly run race over two mile in Newbury. That horse went on to be second to uh, Tritonic 
in the top handicap hurdle there in Ascot. And then on Friday, he took on Metier in Metier's conditions and heavy ground um, and ran very well to be beaten in length of the quarter. Now, he's gone from 141 to 145, Gow Road, but I still think there's, there's more to come, uh, particularly as he's, he's only exposed at the trip. And the last thing to say is that he could possibly go for the Martin Pipe, but I don't think he will because Sam Twiston Davis, who always rides it, he can't ride it in the Martin Pipe. So I think that's why he'll go with the Carl Cope. So I think 25 to 1 is good value. Very well thought out selection, Gavin. There you go. As Jamie Lawson would say, would say, I wasn't expecting that. There you go. I was not expecting that. 25 to 1. A British trained horse, Nigel Twiston Davis, 25 to 1, Gowell Road for the Coral Cup is Gavin Lynch's latest selection. Well played, sir. Thank well you. played. I like we'll that see. one. We'll see. Yeah. Okay, now it's time for mine. Okay. I only have one. I didn't know you were doing two. So one, I, I'll catch up with you next week. That's all right. Catch up with you next week. Okay. And I'm bringing in the captain. Sergio. Bringing in the captain, yeah. I'm bringing in the captain this week. So yeah, because it's blatantly obvious. And Bet365, just, they're just not listening. They're just not listening. They're obviously not watching. They don't know what's going to happen at Cheltenham. And history is going to be made, Gavin. It's going to be the most glorious of days. I think it's going to be the 16th of March. Because there and then, on the spot, Tiger Roll is going to be retired. Tiger Roll, yeah. After winning his fourth Glen Farkless cross-country chase. And after winning at a sixth Cheltenham Festival. 13 to 2 at Bet365. Gavin, it's a wrong price. It's wrong, 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 wrong. Okay. You said that in the paper as well, didn't you? I did. It's 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 bonkers. This horse should be outright favourite. And I think on the day, I think people are going to realise what, what you're getting from Tiger Roll is his peak performance on one day that only matters this season. Gordon Elliott knows this horse inside out. Everybody in the yard knows this horse inside and out. They know what they need to do to get him to the level to win a cross-country chase, okay? He's 13-2 with Bet365. It's an industry best price. Tiger Roll ran at Navin on Saturday. I was there. He finished 14th of 16 in the handicap hurdle. You're going to say, that's a terrible run. It wasn't a terrible run at all. I spoke to Rob James afterwards. I spoke to Gordon Elliott afterwards. They were both chuffed, chuffed to bits with Tiger Roll. Loved the way he made up ground. Yeah, made a bit of ground. Straight. Made a bit of yeah. ground. Yeah. Rob James said he hated the ground. Hated the ground. It was real tacky and it was gluey and he found it very hard to get his feet out of it. But the one thing Rob James said to me, and it's all I want to know, Gavin, the ability is still there. Gordon Elliott was smiling after the race. He knows for the next seven weeks what he needs to do to get this horse right. Don't forget, before you go, don't forget this horse was beaten 65 lengths in a Boyne hurdle last year. He went to Cheltenham and he absolutely bolted up. When he got the better ground, he got back to his cross-country course. He loves the place. He is going to light up a Cheltenham this year, Gavin. And I've been waiting, like, all I wanted was a glimpse of something from Tiger Roll. I got that glimpse on Saturday. I've been waiting for weeks and weeks to get him into the team. I've got him in. He's captain. Tiger Roll, 13-2. Job done. Yeah, I've actually backed him as well. So. Have you? Yeah. Oh. Uh, he's got a massive chance. He will love if the ground is, is yeah, the, the better the ground. And obviously, they, they don't water the, the middle of the track country, over yeah. there. So that'll make a big, big difference. And I'll be there. You'll be there. And there won't be a dry eye in the house. Uh, you'll definitely start crying if he wins. I will bawl my eyes out. Like <laughs> I did at the end of Afterlife, I will bawl crying. I probably won't, but uh, no, it'll be great. Yeah, Tiger all. Tiger, don't let me down. Now, before we go our separate ways, we're going to have a quick look at our anti-post list so far. And Gavin, 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 my heart goes out to you. <laughs> Poor Gavin, blazing Cal. Yeah, oh, that's a pity because I thought he was going to run a big, big race in that race in the Albert Bartlett. If he got there. And somebody sent in a question from the crowd that we didn't get to read out, but they said, how disheartening is it when you pick the horse at a big price, it's much shorter now, and then it gets injured? Sure, yeah. You'd be annoyed for half an hour when you have to get on with it. You have to go to your spreadsheet and put it into the, I have a gonzo file down the bottom, so he has to move from there down to the bottom. Would Anne-Marie know? Would she say, Gavin, what's wrong? And you say, ah. nothing, nothing, I'm grand. Nah, no, no. She no, wouldn't no. know. No. Keep your emotions You just have to, uh, as soon as you hear the news, um, see... Is there anything you can do to, you know, should you back something else for the race or whatever? So. Yeah, okay. But sure, look, you've got great backup. You've got Fernie Hollow at a fantastic price and, and plenty of others on your list that I'm sure you're thrilled with. Yeah, sure. Just once we don't get too many more injuries, that's the... Yeah. But you're going, it's going to happen every year. Hearts are going to... Look at uh, Buzz was another one. Uh, that's two of them gone and there might be one or two more in the meantime. So, look, at, it's seven weeks to go today, 49 days. You know how uh, Jurgen Klopp and Pep Guardiola feel when they're coming to a big match and... And star player picks up an injury. Frustrating, yeah. but hard luck anyway. Yeah. Hard luck. Well, in fairness, at least you don't have the boss of Sasker on your list anyway. Yeah, I don't think we'll see him jump a fence again. No, no. He detested it, didn't he? Yeah, so... Gardner's he was like Dennis Burkamp getting on a flight, so he was. <laughs> he, was he hated yeah. every second of it. Yeah, so uh, Gordon will have to get him back hurdling. And back to the drawing board yeah. for the boss yeah. of Sasker. Yeah, I thought Mighty actually ran okay against uh, John Bond. I'd love to see him stepping up and trip. 
Maybe for even a Coral Cup rather than a Ballymore. Yeah, maybe, yeah. Yeah, so he might um, be Gal Road, but there you go. No, he might be Gal Road. <laughs> You're 25 to one shot that you've added to your list. Anything else you want to mention from your list? No, I don't think so. Uh, maybe this weekend the Salarina novice hurdle. I wonder will Ali Gori Devassi run? Willie has loads up at the top of the mm. betting, so I'm sure he'll run maybe three in it. So mm. maybe she'll run. Mm. Do you hope she does? Uh, kind of. The only problem is whoever wins, I think it's a bit silly in three the pound penalty. Five pound penalty. Five, wow. Yeah, so I think it's a bit silly that that's literally the championship race in Cheltenham. Because mm. of the grade two, it's structured differently. And some of them have to give away a five pound, which is a bit unfair, to be honest. But okay, so we'll see whether we'll see Allegory Devassi at Fairy House this weekend. So that's it for episode twelve of Up in the Ante in association with Bet365. Any plans this week? I heard you're teeing off. A uh, good friend of mine, uh, Gordon Johnson's home from America. We were in college together, so uh, playing uh, Doombeg on Friday. So looking nice. forward to that. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. How's your golf game at the moment? I actually got to play last week, which is very rare in January. But the weather is so dry. I don't know what Leopard Sound are going to do for yeah. Saturday and Sunday week, but. Uh, there's literally no rain about anyway. Yeah. And yourself? I'll be in Gorham Park on Thursday looking forward to it. Yeah. It's one of them days you're driving down the motorway and you're really looking forward yeah, to it. Yeah, a huge so, yeah. crowd. Huge crowd. And I'm actually playing poker on Saturday night. Go ahead. I'm playing poker in I don't know how long. I wouldn't even know how to play it. A mate of mine, John Powell, is setting up a poker night. Right. And I think there's 15 or 16 of us and he's getting a good. few kegs of Guinness in. Excellent. Yes, there you go. We some crack football training on Sunday morning. Is it Texas Hold'em or what is it? Texas Hold'em. Right. Yeah, text told them, yeah. yeah, you can read me like a book, I'm useless. Oh. <laughs> so there you go, folks, that was it. That was episode 12 of Up in the Ante. I've been David Jennings, he's been Gavin Lynch. Thanks for watching, and don't forget, if you're having a bet this weekend, gamble responsibly, only bet what you can afford to lose. Thanks for watching.